Welcome back to The Wargamer and another Horus Heresy painting tutorial. This time I'll be showing you how you can paint the Night Lords and as always I'll be using the Citadel range of paints to do so. Now before we can begin painting our miniature we first of all need to primer it and this is so that the later layers of paint will adhere to the surface of the miniature properly. Now for this I've used a grey primer as grey allows us to paint some of the lighter colours quite easily without being too light that it makes painting some of the darker colours more difficult. Now the first area of our Night Lord that I'll be painting will be the metallic blue armour. We want to start off by applying a base coat of lead belcher. In addition to base coating the armour, we also want to paint the areas that we want to remain silver. These areas include things like the blades and the lightning claw, and also some of the pipes and vents across the miniature as well. As with all the base coats that I'll be applying in this tutorial, you want to create a mixture of one part paint to one part water. Paint all the areas that you wish and then allow it to dry thoroughly before applying a second layer over the top. The reason for doing this is because it will give us a really nice strong base coat colour which we can build up from in later steps without obscuring the details by applying the paint too thickly. After completing our base coat we now want to get some shading in those recesses so for this I'll be applying a wash of Drakenhof Nightshade. When applying this wash make sure you keep it only to the armour panels and not the sections that we wish to remain silver. Now this step isn't intended to give us the blue colouring in the armour, but what it will do is to flow into all of those recesses and really help to bring out the detail by enhancing the shading. Now the reason I'm using a blue wash instead of a black wash here is because it won't contrast quite as strongly with the blue armour later on. With our Drakenhof Nightshade wash completed, the next step is to apply a glaze of Gilman Blue across the entirety of the armour. Now this glaze will create a blue transparent layer across the surface of the armour which will give us that metallic blue effect that we want to achieve. We do want to get quite a strong blue colouring here so you may need to apply one layer, allow the first layer to dry and then apply a second layer over the top. And then repeat this process until you are happy with the blue colouring. After allowing our Gilman Blue glazes to dry, the next step is to start washing over the areas that we left silver. And for this we want to apply a wash of Nuln Oil. The next step in painting our Night Lord is to tackle some of the bronze areas on the miniature. This includes some of the studs, some of the detailing on the lightning claw, the heat sink on the gun, and also the straps across the chest. And we're painting all these areas using Sycorax Bronze. With the base coat of Sycorax Bronze completed, the next step is to wash over these areas using Agrax Earthshade. The final step in painting all of our metallic areas is to highlight the edges using Stormhose Silver. To highlight, take a small brush and a very small amount of paint on the tip of that brush and lightly drag it across the hard edges along the metallic areas of the miniature. This includes both the blue, silver and bronze areas that we've painted in the previous steps. This highlight will result in a lighter line along these hard edges which really helps to bring out the detailing that we have in this miniature. So now that we've completed painting all the metallic areas on the miniature, we can start work on the non-metallic areas next. Now before you do so, make sure you clean your brushes thoroughly and also change your water, as you don't want to get the small metallic flakes from the metal paints contaminating the non-metallic paints that we'll be using next. The first non-metallic section that we want to paint will be the black areas. This includes the stock of the plasma pistol and also the sections between the armor panels. And for this, we want to apply a base coat of a bad and black. The next step in painting the black areas is to highlight the edges using Dawnstone. Now this next step is entirely optional and you could use this technique to represent a veteran sergeant or sergeant of your units. So as you may have noticed I've kept the helmet on this miniature with the grey primer but we want to apply a base coat of Rakar Flesh to give it a bone colouring. Following the base coat we now want to apply some shading in those recesses so I'll be achieving this by applying a wash of Seraphim Sepia over the bone coloured helmet. The final step in painting the helmet is to apply an edge highlight of a Shabti Bone. The next areas of our Night Lord that I'll be painting will be the red areas. This includes the lenses in the helmet and also the plasma glow of the pistol as well. And we'll be base coating all of these areas using Corn Red. The next step in painting the red coloured areas is to apply a wash of Caraburg Crimson. Now be very careful when applying this wash to the lenses in the helmet as you don't want to overspill onto the bone coloured areas. The final step in painting the red coloured areas is to apply a highlight of Fire Dragon Bright. Now when painting the lens you just want to paint a small thin line at the bottom of the lens and that will give us that glassy effect. Now the very final step in painting our Night Lords is to paint that iconic lightning bolt pattern across the armour. Now first of all we want to start off by using Baharoth Blue. Now with this Baharoth blue you want to paint some thin lines across the surface of the armour. It's best to paint in straight vertical lines and have them segmenting at different points to create the lightning effect. 
I would also recommend to keep the origins of these lightning bolts towards the top of the miniature. This will create some cohesion across the miniature and give the effect that lightning is traveling down across the armor. The final step in painting the lightning bolts is to apply a small amount of white scar to the origins of the lightning bolts. This will create a transition between the white at the start of the lightning bolt and the blue towards the tips, giving you a much more realistic electrical appearance. And here we have the completed Night Lord. Now you can find a full list of the paints used in this tutorial in the description below, along with links to both my Facebook page and also my Facebook group, The Wargamers. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more, please do let me know in the comments below, along with your suggestions for future tutorials that I could tackle. And finally, I just want to say a huge thank you to my Patreon supporters. It's your guys' support which allow me to make these videos as regularly as I do, and I just want to say a huge thank you for doing so. If you're interested in supporting me as well, you can do so by checking out my Patreon page, which you can find a link to in the description below. From there, you can donate to me from as little as a dollar a month, which just really helps me in buying the supplies and miniatures that I use in these videos. And so with that, the only thing left to say is thanks for watching and goodbye.